obviously what he was trying to do was a kind of a European saga uh, set in America and um, highly influenced by kind of Italian films. And, and uh, you know, Terry's came out of very rich literary tradition. I think he's still uh, very much of a reader. Um, but his sense of the world is, is uh, pretty broad. So I, I think this has a sense of, of Americana, but in terms of, of immigrants, not in terms of a kind of a uh, American-centric uh, vision of what, of what we are. It's not about society, it's about, it's about the universe. It's about the interior and exterior universes, and you're either in rhythm with it or you're not. And the Industrial Age was creating a rhythm of its own which wasn't necessarily in tune with, with the real world. I think that's probably more where Terry was coming from. Terry works from a sense of space, where, whether it's kind of mental space or spiritual space or physical space. Nature is about space. You can't rush it. You've got to just sit with it. And part of that is to getting your, getting your mind to, to slow down and um, not follow out kind of errant thoughts that are wanting to take you this way and that way. So you have to find a, a quiet inside yourself to, to even see nature. Uh, and I think Terry has a certain rhythmic affinity for that, of just slowing down. He's, like I am, perfectly comfortable sitting on a rock and just seeing the world go by. Terry, it was meticulous, you know, the way his, his attention to detail. And I've, I don't think I've encountered that since then, that kind of attention to detail. You know, remember the sand cranes that were brought in specially to be shot? And I think that's the vulnerable side of it, you know, that, he, that he, he's kind of in awe of nature in a way. I think those things were very important to him and it frustrated the crew, you know, which was a basically conventional Hollywood crew because sometimes Terry would be all set up to do a scene and there would be a flight of geese across the sky. He'd get everybody to turn the cameras and shoot this thing because it was happening right then, you know, and the, and the crew would be going, kind of, what is this bullshit, you know? And then it would be like this absolutely gorgeous shot, you know, in natural light. There it was. But that's one of the parts of his genius, I think, is this ability to see the moment, you know, and say, okay, now, we, if we don't get this, we'll never get it. You know, Terry's uh, clearly, the films of his that I've seen clearly come from this same place, which is this big space of breathing, where it's okay to just observe the universe. And, and the foibles of human beings who, who are trying to control the universe is, is our own madness. It's not inherent in the quality of the universe itself. But I don't think it's, it's overly artful meaning that it's, it, we're all available to it. I don't think he's, he's as, as difficult an artist as Tarkovsky, for instance. I think he's a storyteller, and his connection to the earth, I think, is also part of that. His movies are very much about things growing and things dying and things changing. But I think Terry's uh, ability to really focus on that, I mean, he, look, he's essentially made the same movie every time. That's really where he's coming from. He's not a director for hire, he's, he's expressing his universe. Mm -mm. Watch out. Watch out now. <laughs> Terry's not a rehearser. He doesn't come from the theater. I don't know how equipped he was to actually um, lead actors, or, or probably anyone. I mean, I think he had a really good sense, in the broad sense of what he wanted and wanted it to look like and feel like, but I don't know that he knew the exact specifics. He wasn't, he's not that kind of a, of a filmmaker or a creative artist. And because he was new to filmmaking, uh, as I recall, he didn't really know how to talk to an actor. You seem jumpy today. Uh, like a theater director does. 
sick of these stinking birds. So that led to some, some, uh, I know, frustration from from the actor's point of view. I'm docking you three dollars. So it was kind of like do it again. Well, what are you talking about? It's not fair. And uh, and hopefully you'd come up with something that he liked. It could be deeply frustrating. But that's just how Terry works, you know, and it, that works for him. A script, in many ways, is a, a marker that allows everyone to come to work. But the, the things that become meaningful are really the accidents of the moment, like, like in, in jazz improvisations. You can play the melody, but it's, it's how you play with it and, and express yourself through it. Um, sometimes make mistakes, and then you make a mistake that has to be fixed, and you do something else to fix the mistake, and that makes it interesting and, and leads to something else. Um, I think it's almost impossible to do a script exactly as written. Um, most of the processes of, of making a film is cutting things away. You find that you don't need the words. There's too many syllables. There's too many things being said when, in fact, you, you're saying so much just by the mere fact you're feeling something and how that communicates on film. And I think Terry was very much like that. You look at Terry's other films and there's a tremendous sense of impression of fragmented moments that even the dramatic scenes themselves do not necessarily follow conventional structure of revealing dramatic dialogue. It's more fragmented and impressionistic. And so the the character-driven and dialogue scenes are very much of a piece, I think, in, in all of Terry's work, with the visual fragmentation. Films are not about talk. It's about images and feelings and moments. Um, it's not even about story in the end. You don't remember stories as much as you remember a moment in a movie that somehow cuts through everything else as a, like a dream image. So it ended up being a much more silent movie than the original script, which really was a, a very full, normal kind of script. One of the shots that still stays with me, and I, every time I see it, it just it moves me very deeply, is the crane shot that starts with the caravan all along the dirt road, and it then starts to pan with them as they go through the entrance gate of the ranch and then cranes up and you see the house in the background. And it's just one of these sort of heroic grand shots, you know, and we were on a Titan crane. And I remember when we were doing the rehearsal and as the crane started to go up and I was sitting on it, I just, I said, you know, this is one of those moments that I know I will always think back on. And after we did the first take, and it worked out very beautifully, we came down. And, uh, you know, it was a fairly warm day, uh, but I had goosebumps on my arms, and Nestor said, are you cold? And I said, no, Nestor, I'm not cold. It was just that kind of a shot. Mm -hmm.